The following video will show all the basic steps to make time slices from raw radiograms collected in the field. First step is to do is to create a new project. We'll just call this demo. Choose your equipment type. This particular equipment is noggin equipment. We we'll hit new survey. That creates a project for us. Uh, we transfer the data into the project. This particular data, we have it on a USB stick. In the survey data, you just say OK, search the data, and you just import it. All that data gets imported to the raw folder of the project. Next step, create an information file. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is just import all the radiograms that have the extension DT1 for this particular radiogram, or uh, equipment type. We put in uh, the X end and the Y end for this particular site. You hit the radiogram extension, you import, and it automatically creates, uh, reads all the data that has the extension of your manufacturer and assigns it to these links. You can also do this ma more manually by setting your file identifiers, and you can also create X data, X information files, Y information files, and import. So this particular data is all collected uh, in the same direction, in the Y direction, and they uh, were not collected in the reverse direction. Okay, the next step is, step four, uh, we actually have to get information out of the, the headers from this. Uh, it's recorded at 80 nanoseconds and that gets propagated over to here. Uh, if you want to adjust any of the line length, you can actually edit, edit the information file at this particular time. <coughs> we hit save, move on to step five, convert the data. And the first thing we can do is just put on a quick uh, AGC gain curve. And it tries to come up with a gain curve for us. You can actually come in here and adjust it by hand if you want. Uh, let's say we didn't want to put so much gain at the end that the AGC uh, put on. We can actually come here and adjust it like that as well if you want to do that. Okay, once we have our gain curve, well, we uh, get rid of the low frequency drift in the signal by hitting the button called batch gain minus wobble, which uh, creates all the data and the pulses and centers them along the zero line. So we're just going to convert all the data. The data just got converted. We now have all our data right here in, in the radar folder that have been converted. Uh, there are no other steps to do over here. We can look at the grid plot. There's our actual grid plot for the site. Okay. Uh, the next step, uh, this data was not collected in the reverse direction, so we don't have to uh, uh, adjust the data there. We just go to the navigation markers. We assign navigation tags to the data. These lines were 10 meters long, so we'll put 11 tags and markers across that data, which are used for making time slices. Our next step is to go to the slice menu. Uh, we, we search for the zero nanosecond on the data, and we can hit the button called Auto Detect. And if you uh, don't, you can change the threshold. If you don't like where it shows ground zero for it, you can actually choose it with your mouse. Chose the 19 sample. Let's say for this particular site we want to make 20 slices and have 50% overlap. Uh, here shows the time windows and the depth windows best based on this velocity. Uh, we can change that velocity in another menu. Uh, we also decide how, how many, uh, the number of bins per mark. The state have collected in a half meter. We're going to make bins at 25 centimeters. Uh, what that means is we actually break up the radiogram into little uh, boxes, and we compute the average absolute amplitude in each of those boxes, which then get uh, gridded. Well, we're going to run this. We're going to call the name of the, uh, this data. We'll just call it the A time slices. We run it, and we're finished. We move on to the next uh, menu, which grids that data. Uh, I'm just going to put this on a, a broader search in a draft cell size. Uh, and so it's going to search out 1.25 meters and uh, grid all this data up. And let's look at that data as it's coming to the screen. And just hit start gridding. And it's going to go through all the 20 slices in batch and create time slices for us. Uh, we have two kinds of uh, grid interpolation right now. It's using something called inverse distance, which uh, weights the data based on uh, the distance to the point on the grid uh, with a weighting factor of two. There's also a possibility to do Kriging. Uh, Kriging takes a little bit more long, lot longer to uh, execute, uh, but it could also give you higher resolution depending on uh, your recording and your density of lines in the field. got uh, six more uh, slices to go.
Okay, uh, we just created our time slices. If you want to apply another smoother, for instance, a 3x3 three three low pass or a 5x5 five five low pass, I'm going to put on a 5x5 five five low pass onto the data. You hit the button called Start 2D Filter, and it'll make a, a new set of grids that um, has the identifier L appended on it. Um, this could be good to use this when you have a little bit noisier data sets. Uh, it can also smooth out anomalies and make them broader, but it can also connect anomalies for you as well. So there's always sometimes a trade-off between uh, how much smoothing you want to do and how much connection of anomalies that you want to show in your images. Okay, that's been finished. We created the LA grids now. We move over to the next menu. We've been moving left to right and down each menu. We're now at the 2D time slice menu, which is the same as this icon here. We can click on the LA data. Let's say we want to look at 20 grids by four rows at about 80% of the screen. And those are going to show us all our time slices. Each of these time slices is the normal, relative normalization, meaning each map is independently normalized. We also have options to put it on absolute normalization, but for most applications, we usually use relative normalization. We can adjust the gains in all this data. Let's say we wanted to make everything stronger. We can make the hist uh, everything's based on the histogram and the color table across that histogram. We can hit save that, uh, uh, make everything a little bit stronger. We can auto gain all of them, set out where these green bars are set. Right now, they're set to three standard deviations across uh, the mean. Three standard deviations from the average here. And we redraw that, and everything is going to look a little bit stronger. Uh, if you wanted to make everything look weaker, you could come into here. Uh, you could say square. And we can just change just the first uh, uh, time slice. Hit save. And you see the first one's a lot bluer. Uh, you can say I wanted to go just make number 12 bluer. Uh, I can come in here and hit square. Hit the save button on that. We draw it. And Number 12 is likely to be a little bit blue. So we can't tell you how to apply contrast. We make some recommendations. Usually you will linear, save all, and then auto gain all to set the green bars, which are three standard deviations from the mean. Hit redraw. We can take this data now, interpolate across it. And we make, uh, we'll call this the LA data. We'll make five interpolations and create a 3D volume. Here we can go and look at this data in 3D. So here's the data in 3D now. And we have a slider bar. We can go up and down on the data. You can get a solid look if you want. You can rotate this real time where that's working. Uh, you can clear it. You can also put up the original raw data. And these are just time slices and the whole volume made just from the raw data. Here's showing you all your. Um, radiograms. You can actually store one of the radiograms to the screen and look at a time slice across that just to see how things look. Nothing's been processed here. There's been no migration or anything. Uh, with that, we can then also even put on an ISO surface onto the data. And we can look at everything in 3D. There are menus, of course, uh, to look at all the radiograms in, in, on 2D uh, scales as well. We'll put on the uh, correct folder, which is just the radar folder. And there's all your uh, original uh, radiograms. In any event, uh, stay around for other videos, which will show more advanced processing. This was just basic processing using GPR Slice software.